Good morning. Hi, everybody. Um, this is Maddie from Food Power. Thanks for joining our webinar. Um, just to get a sense of if people can hear us and everything's going okay, if you could just type into your attendee chat on the left hand side where you're based right now, and we'll get a sense of who can hear me and where everyone is. I'll start. All right, a lot of London. <laughs> Scotland, uh, Scotland, Sandwell, Manchester, Bangor, Tottenham, Doncaster. All right, amazing, Blackburn, wow, okay. It's working, <laughs> fantastic. And this is a really great way to see where everyone is based. Okay, well, fantastic that we've got people from so many different places. Um, we've got just a few questions coming in. I'm just gonna go over the um agenda for today is there a video there is not a video but can you see the powerpoint i'm just going to change slides yes yes great so what we've got here i'm just going to go through the agenda then um we'll pick it up it's going to be me talking maddie i'm at um uh, my colleagues simon and ben you should be hearing me So those of you, oh, I guess, okay. So uh, this is our first webinar, so you might hear me learning as we go along a little bit. Okay, so here's the agenda. We're going to introduce the team. You'll hear from me, Simon, and Ben. Then we're gonna hear a bit from Simon about the history of the program. Then we're gonna go through what some of the key activities are, which you see listed here. And then we'll have the general Q&A um, at the end. We've left quite a bit of time for that because we wanna hear a lot from you. Um, and as I've written on the slide here, um, you can type questions into the chat box anytime. And if it's like a quick one, like um, uh, if there's a quick question, then I can try to answer it right then and there, or Simon and Ben can. And if not, we're gonna be taking notes on those questions and we'll refer to them during the general Q&A. So first, we'll just go into who is here speaking. I'll pass it over to Simon. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Simon Shaw. I work at Sustain and I am coordinating the Food Power Programme. I know I've met some of you before. Good to meet or e-meet those of you that I haven't met before. So I'm uh, responsible for the pro running of the programme as a whole for uh, liaising with alliances and networks who want to join the programme, for uh, administering the financial support for alliance development, and for uh, the annual conference we'll be holding. Great. Um, and as I said, my name is Maddie. I'm also based at Sustain. Um, I've been here about two and a half years and just moved over from another project. I was doing um, urban food growing in London. Um, and I'm in generally um, responsible for all of our communications. So that's Twitter, website, newsletter, um, running the webinars, producing reports, guidelines, et cetera. Um, and then the other main thing that I'm responsible for is um, working on our annual theme. So um, that's something we'll talk a little bit more about later in the presentation. Uh, it involves consulting with members and figuring out what's the kind of main things that we wanna focus on within um, the Food Power Program each year and it'll change year to year. Then we're gonna hand it over to Ben Pearson, who's in Manchester. Okay, great. Hi, my name's Ben. I'm based at Church Action on Poverty in Manchester. Um, the main areas of work that I'll be overseeing are the engagement of experts by experience, the oversight of peer mentors, and also uh, the peer mentors in kind of the Midlands upwards. Um, I've been at Church Action on Poverty for just over a week, so I'm quite new to this, and I'll be talking more about my specific role a little later. Thank cool. you. Thanks, Ben. So now we're going to pass over to Simon to talk us through a bit more about the program. Thanks very much. Um, Sorry for those that can't hear. 
Oh, they're not going to hear this anywhere else, so I won't say that. So <laughs> we're just we're, just so that everyone knows, we are acknowledging that some people are having trouble logging, hearing. So we're suggesting they try Chrome or Firefox. So just to talk you briefly through the history, some of you were involved as we were developing the, the funding proposal for Food Power. But it's a bid that was in a programme that's been put together by Sustain and Church Action on Poverty. Uh, it's a four year programme uh, funded by the Big Lottery Fund. The programme came out of uh, discussions uh, between lots of organisations at the national level and local level, uh, thinking about what we could do as organisations to uh, tackle food poverty at different levels. So I've just included the information about End Hunger UK there, which is the campaign that's uh, doing uh, a lot of campaigning at the national level as well as supporting local end hunger groups and that's a program funded by the Esme Fairban Foundation but supported and run by Church Action on Poverty on Oxfam. So they're doing the sort of national level campaigning and as a lottery funded project we're focusing on what local areas can do and learn from each other but still very much with a focus on addressing some of the root causes of food poverty. And alongside uh, the two main organisations, we will have peer mentors involved in the programme. And we're also liaising with, again, that same group of national organisations that come together as the UK Food Poverty Alliance, the Feeding Britain Network, the Independent Food Aid Network, the Sustainable Food Cities Network, and the Menu for Change programme in Scotland. Uh, so a lot of conversations do happen at that national level. And part of that is about all coming together and making sure we, we're working effectively, but also making sure that local areas and groups aren't overwhelmed by multiple contact from multiple programmes, which we appreciate can be uh, quite a lot. So it's a four year programme, as I said, so by 2021, we'd like there to be more coordinated, long term, sustainable and tailored approaches to tackling food poverty across the UK. And just to be clear, we know there's lots of good work uh, happening already. And the key point for us is it happening across the UK. So really supporting alliances and local areas to learn from each other. Uh, and very much those solutions and uh, opportunities being developed by local areas with support from us as a national team. Uh, but very much, again, focusing on peer to peer support. And the third aspect that uh, Ben P will be leading on and saying a little bit more about in a moment is about making sure there's a stronger voice for those experiencing food poverty, uh, influencing practice on the ground, but and also influencing strategic decision making. So when we were consulting on the bid, a lot of local areas and alliances said they would love to make sure that people with lived experience of food poverty were genuinely and meaningfully part of strategic decision making and action planning, but that was challenging for different reasons. So um, Ben will come on to what he's planning around that. So the basics of the programme, as part of the lottery funding, we have funding to work with 32 food poverty alliances or networks in a more intensive way. We expect the food power network to be bigger than that 32, but that gives a scale of, of what we've got uh, available to us in terms of financial support for local alliances and some expectations around the peer mentoring, etc. And we're structured as the national team of us three uh, who've introduced ourselves. Uh, a group of peer mentors working across different regions and nations of the UK and an evaluation partner who we're just in the process of appointing. So as I said, the focus is very much on peer support, developing learning networks at a regional and national level and supporting exchange visits between different alliances, because we know that's something that alliances would like to do, but that's, that's always something where uh, resources are limited in terms of going to visit other areas. We want to create a national network um, of food poverty alliances very much in partnership with those other networks that I mentioned uh, and uh, support that through communications and face to face and events like uh, online events like this. And we do have a, a different streams of financial support available, which I'll come on to in a bit more detail in a moment. 
So the program should focus on developing food poverty alliances or networks and their action plans to uh, address food poverty, including the root causes. Um, we will be uh, working, hoping to work together on an annual focus on a specific issue that Maddie will go into a little bit more detail on in a moment. That work engaging experts by experience at the strategic and decision making level and making sure we're evaluating what works and that's very much a learning process over the four years rather uh, having that built into our work and just to be clear by food poverty alliance uh, we mean a partnership or consortium of organizations which ideally would be drawn from across the public faith voluntary and community sectors who commit to work together to tackle food poverty in a given geographical area uh, some of the alliances we've got involved so far in the program are sort of strictly food poverty alliances and that is the reason the organizations have come together others are focusing on the wider sy food system or inequality and poverty and food poverty is a main uh, priority for them as a network so there are we're open to uh, different approaches in terms of what the structure of an alliance might be uh, for us, it's it's just being clear who's involved and particularly uh, what the role of the public sector is within that alliance. So just to give a bit of background to what we mean by Food Poverty Action Plan, this is an excerpt from Belfast Food Network's Food Poverty Action Plan that summarises the objectives of their Food Poverty Action Plan. So they've got um, objectives around uh, responding to need around mitigating the impact of welfare reform locally, making sure best practice is shared, but also on the right hand side, uh, sort of very high level objectives around influencing public policy or raising awareness and shaping public perception. So a real range of objectives for them. And then this excerpt is from Brighton and Hove's Food Poverty Action Plan, which on the left uh, is making the point that crisis food poverty is just one element of food poverty. And they want to, uh, <clears throat> they, through the plan, they've, they focus their work on tackling, uh, supporting crisis food aid provision, but also trying to address those longer term uh, drivers of food poverty through promoting the living wage, uh, supporting specific groups uh, to uh, uh, access a healthy diet or prepare healthy food, uh, supporting shared meals and eating together, but also uh, ensuring that financial inclusion and people are maximizing their benefits. So those are just two examples. Our sustains guide on developing food poverty action plans links to a number of food poverty action plans from across the country. And we'll re be updating that shortly because there have been a number of plans developed this year. So we'll make sure that those are part of a, a next version of that guide. Just to say a little bit more about the peer support and learning, um, we very much have a thrust within the program of Alliance to Alliance peer mentoring. In the future, we would hope these webinars, as well as our events and conferences, will very much bring in the voice of alliances uh, themselves. Uh, this is sort of an introductory webinar today. Uh, we'll have written resources that very much feature evidence and practice from local areas and those peer learning networks and exchange visits will uh, occur throughout the program as well. So this isn't, a, this isn't necessarily a, a virtuous circle of one following the other, but it just is to demonstrate that those, those four kinds of activities are happening and supporting the peer learning. And then this is a slide that I actually prepared for the Sustainable Food Cities Conference uh, last this summer. Uh, and it's just an example, really, of how we might think about bringing together evidence from across the country. So this is an example of some of the examples of uh, holiday food provision across the country. Uh, so during the, the workshop that I produced this for, we talked about the different models uh, that had been used uh, and also the extent to which um, some food provision was trying to influence uh, public policy decisions. So, for example, in Wales, there, there has been uh welsh government funding for holiday food provision secured in london the mayor's fund is explicitly saying that it's funding holiday food provision with the aim of developing an evidence base to influence government so uh, it's just one example of how we might help local areas join the dots because we know that 
can be uh, difficult to find time for. Uh, yes, the financial support. So, um, as I hope you're all aware, because we made sure we included it on the invitation to the webinar, uh, we have the first round of fun financial support for local alliances to develop their alliance and develop food quality action plans and take part in exchange visits closing tomorrow. So that will be the first round of that support. We'll have two further rounds uh, at the same time uh, next year and the year after that. We will have funding associated with the annual theme that Maddie will talk about in a moment. So up to £5,000 uh, for five organisations available over the three annual themes. Uh, we'll have funding of up to £5,000 for the work engaging experts by experience. So uh, three pilots and then 12 more uh, uh, pots of financial support. And we will also have a pot for supporting local evaluation. So uh, four rounds of two, uh, two chunks of money for that. Um, importantly, at the bottom there, it mentions match funding. Uh, when we were consulting on the bid, we obviously heard different things about how easy it is to secure match funding in some areas. So we very much appreciate that and have been clear that uh, cash, cash match funding is uh, one option and in-kind support. So if that's uh, perhaps a local authority officer dedicating, committing some of their time to support an alliance, that can be costed up and included as in-kind support. Uh, meeting room space, uh, marketing or print cost support, those kind of uh, in-kind support as well. It would be something that people could, would be invited to include in application processes. Um, so we hope that's striking the right balance between making sure that people are able uh, to ask for in-kind uh, match or in-kind support because we include it as one of our questions, but also recognising that there will be variety across the country in terms of what's available. Okay, cool. Thanks, Simon. Um, did you want to jump on something? Okay, great. So, um, glad to hear that in kind looks like it's helpful, and you guys are um, that's resonating with people who are listening in. Um, so, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what we're calling an annual theme or food power push. We're still kind of um, figuring out the language on that one, and we'd also be happy to hear from you about what resonates more on that. But essentially what we want to do is have each year of the program, so starting in 2018 and then 2019 and 2020, whew, that seems really long away, but also quite close, um, that, that is to have some sort of like annual theme that builds momentum around a certain topic um, or a certain set of issues. So we're going to try to strike a balance between um, broad enough that many different types of alliances can get engaged, but also um, uh, with a uh, concrete things that can happen so that we can see what's taking place on the ground and have ways for people to get in, involved um, with the idea of it. So we sent out a survey a few weeks ago to um, alliances that had already registered with Food Power to get a sense of what people are working on, what they're going to be working on, and what would be most important or most helpful to have us focus on. Um, so thank you to everyone who has filled that out. It's been very, very useful. Um, and newer alliances, I've emailed you about that as well. Um, and we'll be emailing more alliances as they join to get a sense of where everyone's at around the country. Um, so we're using that information to figure out what would be the best thing to focus on. And we're going to be announcing that probably in January um, with the available funding that's associated with it. So as Simon said, that's um, 5K for five alliances and then we'll have that funding available at the start of each year when we um, announce what the new theme will be. Um, so what is it, what will it actually include? Good question that I've put on the slide. <laughs> um, so it'll be involved publishing a briefing paper about the issue or kind of the umbrella issue with the different aspects of it. It'll be hosting a series of webinars based on that theme or like sub themes within it. So we're hoping to do about one a month starting in January. So the January one will be kind of an intro um, webinar to get to explain what we're working on and how we came to it and ways to get involved and then we'll do subsequent ones uh, February, March, April, May I think 
Um, there'll be the financial support, as I mentioned. So that's for alliances who want to take on particular chunks of work related to the annual fee. Um, and then depending on what it is, there might be um, more kind of additional resources that could help alliances to take action. So for example, if um, uh, like promotion materials uh, was one of the things that we are speaking about is providing those things, maybe uh, Twitter banners or things like that, where we can um, come up with one thing that can be used more widely to help um, engage on the issue nationally. We're also gonna be putting together um, a series of case studies of action. So that'll be looking at who's already, so again, like um, Simon was mentioning, in the spirit of peer learning. So seeing who has already done work on this uh, theme or food power push, um, what's gone well, what can we learn from them and how can we share that? So those will be, um, like the briefing paper will be um, downloadable PDFs on our new website. And then also our annual conference, which will be in spring 2018, will include um, uh, workshops and other um, activities based on that theme to, again, to kind of generate the momentum we're talking about and figure out what are the, the biggest issues of common concern and where are those opportunities for alliances to take action and where we can add value at the national level as well. Um, just to note that just because we choose one, this, this food power push or the annual theme, it doesn't mean that we're not going to also be thinking of and doing things around all the other um, variety of issues that are associated with food poverty. It's just a way to kind of bring people together and to try to make progress on um, one area each year. So it doesn't mean everything else is left by the wayside. It's just a way to focus in a bit. So moving on to communications. Dun, da, da. So we're on Twitter at Food Power UK. Would love to hear from you. And one of the things I'd really like to do in our communications is use our voice um, in a national way to help promote what you're doing to a wider audience. So please um, do follow us and also tag us in anything. And we're very happy to retweet and share anything you're doing. Um, in that same, um, in a, in a similar way, the newsletter, I'll be sending it out on the start at the start of each month, usually on the first, um, and I'll be emailing around to all of our Alliance members um, about a week or so before, which I've already been doing, to ask for any news from your Alliance. So again, we want to use our newsletter, which is at the national level, like a megaphone for the projects that are happening at um, uh, around the country. So to share, so if you've done a new report, if you've had um, a piece in the news, if you've just finish some big piece of work, we'd really like to highlight the news from the alliances. So please don't ever be shy to get in touch with me to say, hey, we've got this thing, we'd really like um, to spread the word about it. Um, and we're wide range, so uh, yeah, don't be shy. Um, and yeah, so same for Twitter and newsletter, we wanna be using that as a way to, to get the word out. Um, we have a website right now, but we're building a new one, which is gonna sit separately from where it currently is with Sustain. Um, it will be launched at the start of December um, and it's going to host a map of all of the alliances who are members of Food Power. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so you can see who else is involved and um, what they're up to. There's also gonna be, again, similar vein, you can see it here, there's a trend, news items from members and partner organizations. So to give people a sense of what's going on nationally, again, focusing on that idea of building momentum, not just around the annual theme, of course, but just any sort of news items. And we're also putting together a set of resources. So this will include, um, for example, like I mentioned, the briefings on the annual theme. We'll have all of the um, links to the recordings of our webinars there. We'll also have links to partner resources um, and other things that might be of interest or of help to our members. Um, Finally, as I kind of mentioned already, we've got the webinars. Um, they'll be around every month or two on different topics. Um, it's, uh, as Simon mentioned, or one of us mentioned, it's not going to just be us speaking. Um, we're going to try to bring in a range of experts to share their knowledge. And, and particularly, we're really hoping that, again, we can use this as a way to share um, experiences and learning from um, alliance to alliance. So um, we'll be reaching out to a lot of you who are probably listening right now, hopefully, to be on the other side um, doing what we're doing. Um, so we're thinking of it really as, as, a, as a tool to enhance peer learning across the country, help disseminate best practice, 
Um, and it'll all be recorded, so it'll be a resource for everyone, we're hoping. So I'm just going to hand it over to Ben in Manchester. Thanks, Maddie. Um, so, as I mentioned in my introduction, I'm going to be leading on the Empowering Experts by Experience. And as Simon mentioned earlier, I think he talked about how people with lived experience were likely to already be involved in uh, projects and organisations within alliances. Uh, this is looking at how those individuals with direct experience at a grassroots level of food poverty can play an active um, role at a strategic level within the Alliance and uh, wider both regionally and nationally. Uh, so what we'll be doing is uh, delivering training in community participation, looking at how individuals can be empowered uh, to influence again both on a local level but also a wider level as well, both uh, within alliances and for people experiencing uh, food poverty. Um, those, um, the, the training is going to uh, kind of start early next year. There's going to be three pilots that are delivered in the first year. Um, people will, alliances and interested uh, kind of uh, projects who want to be part of the pilot uh, will be able to register um, hopefully from early December. Um, they will then kind of be confirmed early next year and three pilots will be delivered which will then trial out different tools and engagement methods to look at um, how best to empower those with um, lived experience and then the idea is in years two three and four um, that what we learn through the pilots can be rolled out into 12 uh, more areas uh, so the um, idea is by um, the end of the project, there'll be a minimum of 120 people with uh, lived experience who um, have the ability to kind of uh, be empowered to have that influence um, on both the local and national uh, level. Um, so um, if anybody's interested in that, um, obviously, we've got questions at the end, but um, I'd be happy to chat to interested um, organisations and alliances um, for who might want to get involved in the pilot, which will be starting um, early next year for a period of uh, 12 months for the three, three times. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Ben. So, um, that wraps up the majority of the things we wanted to share with you. Um, we've got two questions that have come in that I'll get, to, um, I'll just answer those quickly. And if you have any other questions, feel free to start typing them in. Um, one person asked about, is the funding only open to existing alliances? Um, they know pe other people who are interested to get involved in new activities. So I'm gonna toss that over to Simon. Uh, yeah, so the program is about supporting alliances that already exist as well as supporting new alliances and networks to develop. The registration process is kind of the gateway to the program as a whole and the idea is that at the point of applying to register with the program there are a group of organizations and some individuals who are who have come together in some way and have maybe some uh, suggested objectives draft aims about why they're coming together and what they want to do around food poverty in their local area. And at that point, that would be a point to register with the program and uh, start to have access to the support we can offer. Um, so in terms of areas that are coming together, we can offer some advice about the kind of things you might want to do to bring together a group of people so that you can get to the point where you're able to register because we can appreciate those potentials get a bit stuck in a catch-22. So we're happy to to support people if, if they want to get in touch with me, uh, Simon at sustainweb.org, then I can give some advice on how you might bring people together initially, although I'm sure um, many people have an idea of that in the first place. Great. So that hopefully answers um, Jackie and Cecilia's questions. The, the website will, 
just to follow up, uh, Cecilia asking about the new website, like Simon said, um, you'll be able to see who already has active alliances that are registered, but we also know um, a, from around the country people who are kind of potentially in a more, um, uh, what's the word, emerging, uh, they're more emerging alliances. So there might be an emerging alliance in your area that we know about that you might not have connected with yet, so we could help in that way as well. Um, we have another question here about, are we linking with Feeding Britain? Yes, we are. Do you want to say more, th more about that? Yes, yes. So I talk to the National Feeding Britain team at a regular, uh, on a regular basis, uh, making sure that we're checking in with each other and aware of each other's events and programs. Uh, members of Food Power can be potentially involved with Feeding Britain and members of the local areas involved with Feeding Britain could also be involved with Food Power. Mm. And we do have a couple of Feeding Britain local sites that are um, linking in with Food Power. Um, and what, but whenever a, a, a local feeding area, Feeding Britain area, wants to get involved in Food Power, we just make sure that we have a three-way telephone conversation with between me, uh, Rosie or Annie in the Feeding Britain team and that local area just to check in with them about how they, what they want to get out of being involved in both programs, you know, how we can help make that easy for them in terms of talking to two national programs because that is a commitment in itself, I think. So uh, hopefully that's reassuring in terms of there's, there's national conversations going on and then when there's local interest as well. And we're trying to avoid uh, duplication and overlap in areas. So actually if Feeding, feeding Britain sites are already established in a particular area. There is a potential for them to be involved with food power, but we wouldn't want to undermine the work that's already been done as part of the Feeding Britain network. And I would just say the same goes for Menu for Change in Scotland, where we're in conversations with them about the areas that they're working in specifically. Um, and uh, I would say pretty much the same. There's maybe groups that want to be involved in both and it just be a three-way conversation, but we are in touch with the people um, who are um, running both of those programs. And in terms of sharing learning and knowledge between different programs like Menu for Change, Feeding Britain, that's something we're very much committed to. The examples that we want to disseminate shouldn't just come from uh, the sort of primary food power network we we, we we want to hear what many for change are doing in scotland what the feeding britain areas are doing and what they've achieved and the lessons they've learned as well as things that haven't gone so well because i think that's often what people don't talk about so much yeah. um so there's definitely a commitment to do that and some of that is working that through now in terms of how do we involve those other projects in our webinars in our conference but those conversations are happening now um i'm just going to pick up on a quick one above when will we hear if our funding application for the first round is successful? We would be interested in being involved with Ben's pilot project, but would like to know what capacity you have. I would say the funding for the pilot projects will be launched at the start of December, and the closing won't be until January 26th, because the tentative um, closing date for the application to register your interest to be part of the pilot. So you should know, well, you definitely, you certainly will know if you um, have been successful in the first funding round well before January 26th. Um, I think those decisions are being made early December. So by mid-December, you would know whether or not those were successful. Yeah, so just to clarify, that's the first round of financial support for alliances to develop uh, themselves and their action plan. So that's the one I mentioned that has the deadline tomorrow. Um, less active. Just going through a few other questions here about being a less active member of Food Power, so get new newsletter set and if any particular funds fits this. So the funding is um, particularly for alliances who are registered with the program. Um, however, we would highly encourage people to still be um, involved um, and sign up for our communications and see what else comes along. And then there will also be the annual conference in the spring, which could be a good way to get involved um, on a more personal level. I'm just gonna read through these other questions here. It's good to hear about your the interest in what sounds kind of like food sovereignty given Brexit coming up or happening. Um, yeah, and the point about rural communities and uh, food deserts. Um, I think we. I come from a background that sustain and previous roles of working to address or 
influence policy around food poverty very much from a London or urban uh, perspective. That's not exclusively sustained, sustain and cap church action and poverty. We have experience of working with rural communities, but I think that is one thing that we're particularly conscious of that uh, food power uh, can help disseminate learning from where rural areas have uh, tackled food poverty in ways that work uh, for those their particular circumstances, but also uh, I think we're, we're going to help, we want to help areas tackle some of those issues that are still going on around how do you address uh, food poverty in rural areas where uh, communities are more dispersed, poverty can often be more hidden, there could be less awareness around it. Uh, so we really would um, like to hear more from the network around that. So that's something we'll be uh, working on. Great. Um, are there any other questions? And does anyone else want to ha have any other comments on areas where you might specifically be looking for support? Um, I appreciate that people are already getting in touch with Ben directly to let them know their interests. That is fantastic. Um, and if there's anything else, we um, we didn't expect this to take up quite the full hour and it looks like we are gonna be well under that. Um, we've got a question about the peer mentors. Do you wanna? It's just been about a bit. Uh, I'll send a link on how to sign up for the newsletter in just a moment yeah. and I'll let Simon talk about the peer mentors. Yeah. Um, so we've, um, we will be announcing it shortly, but we've appointed some of the peer mentors for some of the regions and nations of the UK. Um, we, as expected, there's sort of variable engagement at this point with Food Power Programme as a whole. So we have some areas where there's uh, a good number of alliances registered and some areas where some regions of the UK uh, still where there's only one or two um, alliances registered. Uh, so therefore, a limited number of alliances showing interest in delivering the peer mentoring. For those areas that we aren't going to appoint a peer mentor for at this point, uh, we're going to be proactive uh, in organising some regional meetings in those areas um, to bring together those alliances that are registered and also look at areas where there's little interest, where historically I think different programmes within SUSTAIN and other sort of food poverty programs have uh, found it more difficult to make links. Um, so we'll be again proactively trying to tease out uh, who might be interested in food power in, in those regions. Um, we had another uh, question about uh, examples of food poverty action plans. Um, in just a minute, I will send a link to our food poverty action plan, developing a food poverty action plan document, which I think has links to case studies in it. Um, and that is a free download from Sustain's website. Um, just reading through these. Thanks for the interest in getting involved. Um, and we had a question. Sorry, we're just scrolling through here. About Manchester. Oh. Okay, so that is more of a comment about carbon and food. But have you engaged with, have we engaged with Good Food Greater Manchester? So Tom Skinner, who's just joined, uh, don't worry, Tom, there'll be a recording of the webinar. Uh, the Greater Manchester Food Poverty Alliance is registered with Food Power. So yeah, we strongly encourage for those different alliances and networks in areas to um, make links uh, locally to make sure there's maximizing their value as alliances and networks but also avoiding any duplication or potential tensions um question about wales yes dave um the peer mentor will be available to uh, alliances registered across wales um i think at this point it's really important for alliances to register uh, with the program if the, if they are interested in it so that we can get a sense of interest and the needs of local alliances so that the peer mentors could then start making those contacts. 
And there is someone appointed in Wales as a peer mentor. Yes. So I'm just sending through the link I just sent through is the Developing Food Poverty Action Plans um, download from Sustain, which will have more guidance around um, developing food poverty action plans and um, also has more information on case studies. Um, we've had some questions about um, guidance on mapping the local food system and working across local 30 bound. Yeah, I know that in the the ambition in say Wales is for the food poverty alliances or at least some of them that we're working with as part of food power are actually operating across multiple local authority areas. Uh, we know that some alliances uh, operate across the geography that makes sense for them. So as long as we understand that and there's a clear indication of that, um, we recognize that yeah, people are working across different geographies. Uh, just to confirm on the peer mentors, we have offered the peer mentoring role to somebody in Wales. Uh, everyone who registered with the programme up till now has been given the opportunity to indicate they're interested in delivering peer mentoring. Um, I can't publicly say who they who is appointed yet because uh, they've been offered the role but haven't formally accepted it yet. So I think for their benefit, it's best if I wait for that. Uh, peer mentors are selected on a basis of a number of criteria and we'll also be bringing them together in January, the first round of peer mentors to uh, induct them in the programme, ensure, have a sense of where people's uh, strengths and uh, um, opportunities for development are and kind of bring people into uh, some of our key uh, objectives around the programme, including uh, uh, ensuring they've got a good understanding of the different communities and different levels of how poverty uh, and food poverty manifest themselves in different areas. Uh, and just around uh, signposting and matching uh, alliances to other alliances that they might learn stuff from, I think, yes, we are expecting peer mentors to play a role in that. But part of the peer mentor role is about bringing people together within their area and uh, others around the table taking a bit of ownership around that as well. The peer mentors are important, but it's very much about a peer learning network and people uh, putting out what, what they think uh, other alliances might want to learn or hear about from their own alliances and uh, that happening on a, on a mutual basis. And then us, uh, by bringing uh, information up from the peer mentors across the country, understanding actually potentially there's an alliance on the South Coast who should really hear about what's happening in Northern Scotland, uh, and they wouldn't na perhaps naturally come into contact. So actually nationally, we hope to join those dots a bit more. Okay. Do we have any other questions about the program? Um, I will be sharing the slides from this with people who have um, registered um, and our email addresses are on slide two. So if you have any other further questions that you have, um, if you have any other further questions for us, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, and it says a bit about where we're focusing on as well, because um, we hope that, you know, if you have questions about peer mentoring, then Ben and Simon will be the best people to answer those. If it's around communications, that would be me. Um, and if it's around um, conferences, uh, that would also be Simon. And again, evaluation and um, uh, other funding details would likely be Simon. Um, so um, I just want to go on to the last slide, which is just oop, um, the ways to get involved. Currently, um, there's the link to the newsletter, which I already put through um, earlier in the chat. Um, if you're working with a Food Poverty Alliance already, we would love to have you register with Food Power. Um, if you are work, we have had a few people that we've already met with and spoken with who are around, who are um, have just started bringing together a group in their area. And so, if that's something that you're just um, kicking off with and want to speak to us more about 
what getting involved would look like, then we'd be very happy to talk to you about that um, and ways we might be able to support. Um, and we'd also um, love it if you could encourage alliances in other areas to register as well. Um, and if you want more of a light touch involvement, if you aren't working with a local food poverty alliance, then the newsletter and other ways of communication would be great. And then you'll stay up to date on future webinars and the conference in the spring. Um, yeah, great. So what Claire just wrote about um, working in rural areas in Syria, we would definitely like to connect with you about that. That sounds great. Um, and uh, again, if you are thinking of registering, just considering how you might benefit from um, the peer mentoring, peer learning networks, exchange visits, and the other financial support. Um, I'll be sending out the next letter at the start of December, as I mentioned, and that will have more information about the next round of funding that's available, which will be the pilot projects um, around engaging experts by experience. And then from there, we'll be launching the annual theme and that funding round at the start of January. So those would be the other key dates. Um, the We'll have at least uh, four weeks at the bare minimum to apply for any of these, but they'll be launching at the start of each of these months. And for the, because um, the experts by experience funding goes over Christmas, it will be much longer. Um, so thank you everyone for registering to uh, this first webinar. Thanks for writing with us as we um, hesitated and read and spoke and then <laughs> worked out the functions. Um, and we look forward to having you um, join us for future ones. Thanks. I'll just leave this open for one more minute so that if you anyone wants to chat, we'll leave this open for the next um, three or four minutes. We'll, we'll just mute the sound so that people can exchange details if they'd like to in the in the chat function. Uh, okay, have a good rest of your day.